Hello everybody, so I'm in the Nia here with another Age of Empires 2 interview. This time around I am interviewing Finnish player Viles. This is the third time he's been able to qualify for a Red Bull Wallolo main event, and this is gonna be the first time that he's gonna get to play at least two matches. He's been knocked out in round one, a stat that he shares with Winchester, so I wanted to talk to him about that, as well as some of the strategies that we might look forward to in his main event appearance. A little bit of a spoiler, he won't talk about them. <laughs> but anyway, I really hope you enjoyed this interview. The first question that I want to ask you is a question that I also asked Winchester, who I talked with um, a couple of days ago, which is that you both have qualified for Red Bull Wallolo now three times. You are three times qualifiers. And you've never been able to get past that first round of games in you know you've had to play against uh, leary and you had to place against mbl so obviously really high level players who have found a lot of success in in the format of you know empire wars so what i want to ask you is do you think that with this new format of group stages you will be able to have more opportunities to out of group stages and into the final playoff format or do you think that you know you can qualify consistently and then getting into a playoffs might be a little bit harder but you know what are your general thoughts with the with the new format and with the fact that you've been qualifying um for every event so far mm, i think i will have better chances this time because uh yeah, Leary and MBL have been really tough opponents, so it, it will be a random draw, though, so it can be a tough group, but at least there's a better chance to have some little bit easier opponents, so I can is hopefully there, make it to the yeah. eight. Is there anybody that, if they were on your group, you would feel more confident that, that maybe you have, you know, Obviously not a free game because everybody who has qualified and who has been invited is a really good player overall, but that you feel you're going to have a better chance against them than, you know, somebody else. Well, obviously all the players have different levels and it will be, there will be easier and tougher opponents. For example, Kapoch upset MPL last time, so he might be not be considered as a top 10 player, so he might be a bit easier, but obviously it will be hard to play against anyone, everyone will be prepared, so there will be not, no easy games. Hey, but I, I do want to highlight, you've just finished this qualifier today, and you won 3-0 and 4-0, and in, you know, we can kind of talk about the fact that, sure, it was Vodka and it was CL, but they are also good players. So I want to know if you feel more or less confident in having won those matches um, in such a fashion and getting like a full clean game of, you know, 3-0 and 4-0 back to back. And then I want to ask you a little bit about last week where you didn't qualify. Um, but I first want to hear your thoughts on this week. You got the qualification that you wanted, and you did it with a with a clean slate. So, how does it make you feel uh, right now? Well, I was obviously very motivated to qualify this week after I lost the last one. So, I was practicing a lot and preparing the draft and maps. So, I'm very happy how the games went today, and confident going to the main event as well. And from last week, you ended up getting knocked out in a very tight series against Classic Pro. Um, and I kind of wanted to know, because I didn't get a chance to, to watch the game, but I did want to know if you feel that it was a game that you lost because of mistakes that you made, or was it a game that you lost because Classic Pro was playing at a basically at and above your level of, of play? What exactly do you feel was the contributing factor to how that game turned out? Well, I get, came into that game after a two-week Christmas. 
had one practice set in the morning before tournament and I was a bit out of shape and hadn't prepared properly so I was playing below my normal level but that's nothing to to take nothing away from Kasik Proki played well and punished me for the mistakes I made. And uh, another thing that I noticed, and I wanted to get your confirmation because it wasn't clear on the qualifier chat, is on the map ban, on the map bans, I think you've banned eruption pretty much every time, at least from the you know the top sixteen games against Classic Pro and the games this week. Um, any particular, like if that was the case, any particular reason why you are banning eruption uh, often on, on these kind of high stakes games? And in case it was an eruption that you banned this week, what maps did you ban and why did you ban them exactly? Mm, I'm not a big fan of that map. It's so all in about the middle and you can't really put early pressure there because you are so far from the enemy, so I don't feel like it's a good map for my playstyle. And what? Uh, and we didn't get a chance to see your home maps this this week, uh, this weekend. And I wanted to know what are some of the elements from the maps that you you are going to be picking for yourself that feel um, benefit your playstyle, your particular playstyle. Is there like a common thread there? that makes them better suited for your playstyle, Or is it just these are the maps that you've practiced the most or that you felt you played the best and not much more than that? Mm, I have practiced all the maps, but it always depends on the opponent as well. Like against CL, I picked aggressive maps such as Atacama, Haboob. So you have to adapt to the opponent as well. What do you think they are good at? But I'm confident play, playing any map. Nice. And I also wanted to know in your draft pick, um, you picked up Tatars, which is a civilization that a lot of people have been picking up on. They tend to be really good. They're one of the few civilizations that still have their Dark Age bonus with the sheep and, and a bit. And I wanted to know what happen in this seven games, essentially seven maps that you play this weekend for the high stakes games, the ones that decided the qualifiers, um, why the chance never arose for you to play them? What decision made you say, you know, I'd rather play other civs and I, I won't play Tatars? Because Tatars was a civ that you did pick um, sort of early in the draft, a little bit in the middle of the draft. But I want to know what's the strategy there for you for that civilization. Yeah, the Tars are really strong in Empire Wars as well, but I was saving them for one of my home maps. So didn't get to play that one. For And now I want to know for which home map and for what reason would you save them? And it's okay if you don't want to tell uh, as groups are coming up in a week, but you know, I, I'm really interested and you feel like you can talk about that one. I don't want to comment on that one. <laughs> it's totally okay. It's I get secret. It. <laughs> secret strategies. <laughs> um, so I, I want to then jump into groups, which is going to be you know, in next weekend. Um, and you're going to be playing, we, we don't have groups decided yet. I think we're probably going to know uh, in the week where we're going to release what are going to groups look like. But I do want to know from your own soul reflection, and I'm sure you're going to be watching your own regs as well as everybody else, uh, regs that is potentially in your group. But I want to know today, what are some of the things that you've already noticed about your own play style and about uh, your own performance? that you are thinking, I, I should revisit this, this things that I did, I should take a second look at what I did at these games and, and try to improve this particular thing, like maybe your economy, maybe when you picked up text, maybe when you moved up to the next stage. I want to know what are some of the like quick things that you've already noticed that you need to improve on? Well, the most obvious ones are holes. I had a hole against CL in the first game today and I also have to react to some situations faster 
such as when Wodka sent his crossbows to raid me in the first game today. I didn't react quickly enough and that caused a lot of idle time, but I just have to be on my toes all the time and focus completely on the little details. Do you think that you're going to be looking at changing the way you draft your civilizations? I don't know if you have like a you know pretty complex strategy when it comes to picking civilizations, but um, if you have one, are you constantly making changes to it? Do you think you have a pretty strong drafting? What is, how do you feel about that aspect that is, you know, game in a way? Mm, I have been preparing drafts. I have a civil list for every map and I adapt it every time I feel like another civ is stronger. And I'm also pretty happy how the drafts went in the qualifiers this weekend, so no, no need for much changes. Nice. And uh, final question now that I want to know is, um, have you? who are your general practice partners? Do you tend to practice a lot with other uh, players? Because for instance, I've been interviewing the guys at Gamer Legion, I've been interviewing a couple of the people from Souls as well, and they obviously have their ways of, you know, playing with and against each other to get a little bit more practice time. And I wanted to know uh, about yourself. Who do you play with on a general basis to kind of improve? Or do you just go, you know, into the ladder or, or something like that to you know, get better, essentially? Usually I practice against the max the most, but he has been away for a couple of, week of weeks now. So I have had to find some new practice partners. And I, I've been practicing a couple of sets against Jordan. Too bad he didn't make it to the main event, but those practice sets have helped me a lot. Awesome. All right. Well, thank you so, so much, uh, Viles, for taking the time to talk to me. I know it's a little bit, uh, you know, in the evening for you. So I hope you have an excellent rest of your day. And again, best of luck in the group stages. Uh, I kind of want to know now what you're going to do with so I'll look forward to any of those matches that are happening. <laughs> yeah, thanks for having me. And that is all for this interview. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you have an excellent day. Goodbye.